Hey guys, what's going on? How you going? My name's Adam Dyson and I'm super excited today. So this is one I've been working on for a little while now, but I wanna give you a super fast Lightroom tutorial that's gonna make any landscape image awesome in five steps or less. So I think when I first got into landscape photography, I would edit everything in Photoshop. And at the time, I thought it was a process that I was going to hold on to. But after a while, I realized quite quickly that there has to be a quicker way. So after talking to a handful of friends that are in the photography and video industry, they put me onto Lightroom. So this was probably about five years ago now, and I haven't looked back ever since. So I do use Photoshop and Lightroom together. So I do my basic edits in Lightroom, and then I put it over into Photoshop to do the more complicated stuff. But today, to keep it super, super simple, I'm gonna just focus on Lightroom and hopefully give you guys just a super quick, easy tutorial on how to make the images look awesome with so little effort that it's just gonna blow your mind. So without further ado, let's jump into the computer and get into it. All right guys, so here we are in Lightroom. If you've never opened Lightroom before, I'm sure it'll come up with some kind of prompt windows um, that gives you a bit of an explanation and maybe even a little tutorial on how to use it and the functions down the side here. The main things that we're going to focus on today is one, the libraries panel, and two, the develop. Library is kind of like an explore function, and the develop is where we're gonna do all the editing. So super quickly, I'm gonna run you through a really basic file structure. So if you open up a finder window or a whatever the Windows equivalent is, um, and then over on the desktop, I've got a pictures folder. In my pictures folder, I've got 2018. Then I've got all the months and a, and a generic export folder as well. Um, inside of each month, I've got the days listed that I've shot. So for today's tutorial, I'm going to be in YouTube folder um, and then in my Lightroom video. The best way to do it is if you click on your library tab up the top and run down to import and you'll get a, another window pop up and we're going to find that pictures folder and in that pictures folder we're going to go down to 2018 into YouTube and I've imported in five photos that I think are going to work really well. Go down and we click import. So a couple of seconds later, the files have all dropped in. The function of a library panel is pretty much just to review your images. You can also do some really basic developments over here, but for now, we're gonna leave the library and we're gonna jump straight over into develop. So with trying to keep it as basic as we possibly can, the first thing that I'm going to do with this particular image is I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna click rotate left and that will bring it up straight or counterclockwise, I think it was. So without overcomplicating this tutorial at all, I'm going to focus on the basics. I'm going to focus on detail. I'm also going to do a little bit on the radial filter, which is just gonna make certain elements in the image pop even more. So the first thing I do with every landscape image that I edit is I press the J key to make sure that I've got the clipping and the highlight warnings on. And then the next step I do is I press the R key, which is crop in Lightroom, and I straighten the horizon. So for this particular image, I don't need to do that much, and there is no horizon there. So for now, I'm just gonna straighten it up a little bit to I, and then we're gonna go from there. Press the enter key to confirm that crop. So the next thing I do is I drop down the basics tab, and going from top to bottom, we've got all our main settings here. So the first four are all to do with exposure, the next are pretty much to do with color, and the very top is your white balance. If you shot with a camera in RAW, you'll have your white balance that's already built into the camera for the certain setting that you shot it at. Moving on down from there, the first thing I do is I normally just up my exposure a little bit. And what I'm aiming for here is to get rid of these blue areas and watch that my highlight areas aren't clipping. A tiny bit's okay, but we wanna try to avoid clipping the highlights. Next, let's bump up some contrast. Then I normally bring down my highlights just a little bit and what that'll also do is recover some of those highlight areas. Next, I bring my shadows and most of the time I go all the way up with my shadows 
And that's because I want to try to get as much shadow detail as possible. So the next thing I do is I move down to the whites and the blacks. And if you hold your option key on a Mac or Alt on a PC and move your whites to the right, and what I normally do is I wait until the highlights are just clipping up. So when you hold down the option key, it gives you a black and white representation of when the highlights are gonna blow out. So I normally move it up to when you've got just this tiny bit of white showing, and most of the time that's in the sky. Then I do the exact same process with the blacks, holding down alter option again, moving to the left, and this will give an opposite representation this time, a white on black. Wait till the blacks just show through the tiniest little bit, and there you go. Moving down the line a tiny bit more, we've got clarity, so I always pump a tiny bit of clarity in, and it normally ends up being somewhere between zero and 10. The reason I don't do a lot of clarity is purely because it starts to put halos around items, um, which never looks that good. Then moving down even further, we've got vibrancy. Vibrancy is great because it doesn't affect skin tones if you are shooting portraits. So if you bump up the vibrancy a tiny bit with landscapes, it normally works great. And that's all we're gonna do within the basics tab of Lightroom. And by pressing the backslash key under the delete key on a Mac, you can see the before and afters. And already you can tell this looks so much better, so much more evenly exposed. I think the main thing we need to remember with landscape photography is our eyes can see a massive amount of dynamic range where our cameras are really limited. So by editing them, we can bring them up to what we saw with our eye, therefore creating a more realistic image. Or well, that's pretty much how I feel anyway. Moving down the line. So I'm gonna minimize this basics tab and I'm gonna jump down into detail. So detail is where we control our sharpness and our noise reduction. And as a rule, I normally always bump my sharpness up a tiny bit and I go somewhere between 25 and 50 depending on the image. So by holding the Alt or the Option key again, we can move down to masking and this once again gives us a black and white representation, but this time it gives us an indication of what's being sharpened. So the white areas are being sharpened and the black areas aren't. So for this particular image, I'm gonna move up somewhere around the 80 mark. And I think the main thing we need to remember too is that this is all subjective depending on the image. So just play around with the settings that we're using today and hopefully you can create just a cooler image out of one of yours. So moving down to noise reduction, and this is a basic rule that I found from I actually can't remember where I got this tip from, but so the main idea is that we're trying to get to 100 with the amount and the luminance in the noise reduction area. So for this particular image, we have 45 in the amount. So we're gonna go to about 50 with the noise reduction. And there we have it. Detail section is done. So already you can see by clicking the backslash key again, that once again, we've really brought up the overall feel of the image. So the third and final thing I'm going to do within this image is I'm going to click on the radial filter, which is the fourth tool across in the tool palette up the top. So I'm gonna click on the radial tool, and as a default, the radial tool is masked on. So if you go down to the feather section and click invert mask, it'll just mean that the adjustments are located within the radial tool rather than on the outside. So I think as default, the feathering is really quite low. So the best way to do it is bring it all the way up to 100, which makes sure you get a really soft edge on the radial tool. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to look at the image and look at what the main features are within the image. So for this particular one, I wanna focus on the waterfall itself and this rock in the foreground. So with the radial tool selected, we're going to click and drag a radial out, and I'm going to reposition it slightly over the center here. So then if we scroll up to the functions of the radial tool, it's exactly the same, plus a few more as the basics panel in the first section. And the main things I do here is I chuck a tiny bit of exposure and I also chuck a tiny bit of contrast. 
and that normally just adds a little bit of pop to certain areas. Um, what I've also done in the past too is a tiny bit of clarity. And normally again, that's in between zero and 10. I don't normally go much higher than 10. So that radial tool mask is on and I'm happy with how that's sitting. So the second radial tool, we're gonna to do the exact same thing, reposition it where we want, and I'm gonna jack my exposure up slightly and my contrast up slightly. And in this case, again, I'm going to bring the clarity up. Okay, so that one's done as well. So if you click on the radial tool again up the top, that'll minimize it back down. And once again, by clicking the backslash tool, we can see our finished image. And I think that looks absolutely awesome. All right, so now I'm gonna quickly go through the rest of these images and show you a before and after using that exact same principle. And hopefully you can see that this is just a really super easy way to get an awesome look in Lightroom. So here we are, I reckon it took me about five minutes to do four images. So one minute per image, I think is a pretty good edit time. And let's work through them one by one. So the first one is one that was shot in Tasmania last year and it's gone from the original of that into the after product of that. The next was shot in South Australia at the beginning of this year. And that one's turned from this into that. And this is easily my favorite of this tutorial. The third is one that was shot in one of my local spots at Point Lonsdale. And that's gone from the before of this into the after of that. And the fourth and final image was shot near Ballarat in Victoria, Australia. And it's turned from that into that. So I think the four main things we need to focus on here is one, straightening the horizon, which I think is easily the most important thing of any landscape photo. If you don't have a straight horizon, you can instantly notice it and you can instantly tell there's something off. The second is working through the basics panel and just giving the image an overall correct exposure. And finally then giving the image a little bit of a pop with exposure and contrast in certain areas just to give the image a little bit more feel. Just so you know guys, I do then jump over into Photoshop and give the images a bit more of a touch up. But today I thought I'd focus on the super basic areas of Lightroom. And then later on we can work on more refined editing processes within Photoshop. So there you have it, super easy Lightroom tutorial on how to make landscape photos awesome. Um, I hope you guys really, really enjoyed that. If you did like this video, make sure you click the thumbs up and the subscribe button. Also turn your post notifications on. It really helps me get in front of YouTube's face and get my videos out there more. Anyway, that'll about do us for today. And until next time, I'll catch you later.